is Smart Love Life and my name is JIB. Today I want to talk about a movie I watched on Netflix, Blood, Sex and Royalty. This is a period drama about the relationship between Anne Boleyn and King Henry VIII, I think. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I'll be exploring this relationship which started off very exciting and romantic now king henry wasn't just in love with anne he revered her he was in awe of her anne was different from any other woman he had been with the king was difficult he was unbending he was set in his ways no one could easily talk him out of his beliefs but then came anne who was intrigued by books. She read. It wasn't just the idea of reading. She read books that could get her in trouble. Religion was a big deal in the 16th um, century. According to the story, people got killed for even translating the Bible from Latin to English. Your opinions can get you killed. Yes, it was that kind of error. And Anne was rebellious as she expanded her knowledge by reading. She was instrumental to changing the narrative of the era with the king. She held radical views and can well be described as a feminist, even at that time. So yes, Anne was it, (laughs) you know, she was the it girl. No wonder the king was smitten. He was in love, he professed love, and like a smart woman, Anne ensured that love he felt for her would give her exactly what she wanted. She wanted to be married and be the Queen of England. Now the story became flesh because of King Henry's love for Anne. She excited him and it seemed to work well for her until she was unable to give him a son. Two attempts, I think, yeah, two attempts, and he had reached the edge of his desperation to get an heir. Anne was also desperate. Her desperation was a two-edged sword. She wanted an heir, and she also wanted to remain the most important person in the king's life. Unfortunately, things didn't go the way she planned because his love for her eventually had a purpose beyond her control which is the possibility and the purpose of birthing a son which she couldn't now what i want to talk about is um king henry the kind of man king henry was he was extreme with his emotions he was unreasonable i think i could say he was unbridled His ego was a chunk of distraction from any good qualities. But his king and, you know, all of that didn't matter much. He clearly had no empathy, but he loved Anne. The best parts of him were unraveled whilst he loved her and also the worst parts of him. King Henry masterminded the killing of Anne. Can you imagine that? The woman he loved married and made queen now understand how important his love was by the sacrifices he made initially to be with her he waited on her terms before engaging sexually with her he was ready to be unpopular and unliked by divorcing catherine his first wife to marry anne He listened to new methods to practicing his religion because of Anne. These may sound commonplace in today's world, but things weren't so liberal in the 16th century. After everything, he was willing to give up for her. When he was tired of her, his plan to get rid of her was to set her up with accusations that were untrue accusations that will sentence her to death i read somewhere that love amplifies the true character of someone or a situation now women romanticize the idea of changing a man we watch so many movies 
of a ruthless man who would eventually um, be smitten by a woman's charm and start some kind of journey to becoming better in quotes. Women like to believe they have special powers to turn a man around. And this is why certain types of men who have hurt many women and and many people still find love quite easily. Men on death row, for instance, have women wanting to marry them even with the knowledge of what he has done. (laughs) You know, it is the way women are raised to be nurturers, to take flour and bake a cake, to take a fish and make a fisherman soup to take a seed and grow a flower. That's the way women approach life and love. That is a problem because they would look at a man's poor character and tell themselves, hey, I can fix that. Well, no, sis, you can't. (laughs) You know, women also trust that love is enough, at least 85% of the time. What we don't understand is love amplifies who a person is. If he is mean, his love will be inspired by these traits. Love will not wipe it away. Love will amplify how mean he is. And we all know it is the people we love that enjoy our good habits or suffer our worst habits the most. So, loving a ruthless man and believing you will never be affected by his ruthlessness because he loves you is the biggest mistake women make. His love for you doesn't protect you from who he is. It endangers you because that love will grow from the depth of his wicked heart. It is true that love is not enough. Anybody can fall in love. The kind the evil, anybody. Love can happen to anyone. But you need to know the kind of person you allow yourself to receive love from. If he or she isn't a decent human being and you think you are safe because you are loved by them, you'll soon realize, like Anne Boleyn, that a person's true character would naturally define the kind of love they give. In King Henry's case, he eventually showed Anne the extent of his love, which is, the minute he felt uncomfortable with her, his love decided it was time to wipe her away from the face of the earth in the most brutal manner. The most important foundation, I mean, we can all, we can all understand this. We've heard all kinds of stories, even on blogs, of how people are dealt when with the hands of love, what love does to people, you this one did this person, this one threw acid to this person, this one killed this person, all in the name of loving the person because they were loving people who had the wrong character and the love was amplified in that situation. The most important foundation anyone should have is kindness. The most important foundation is kindness. Prioritize receiving love from people who are kind. Generally kind, naturally kind people. Fall in love with kind people. If love amplifies, then it means the love of a kind person will always be safe. I know women like the concept of bad boys, but that should only be in movies. In reality, you need to make smarter choices. Life is tough. It makes no sense to be entrapped with someone whose only reason for treating you right is based on the way he feels about you. What happens when he stops feeling that way about you? That's where, you know, um, you see the urgency for some of these people to shame their exes. The core of a person is what you fall in love with, not the butterflies of love. 
You fall in love with the core of a human being, who he is when love isn't a criterion or a measure. That is what you fall in love with. Date kind people. Because when love doesn't go as planned or he falls out of love, he wouldn't be trying to leave you stranded, miserable, or dead like King, you know, like King Henry um, did uh, with Anne. So rounding up, he loved her, no doubt, but he loved her from a place of his own poor character. And the best he could give her at some point in that love was to kill her. Because that is the kind of man he was. So, when you want to fall in love, look at the person's core character first. Forget the excitement of love. Forget the butterflies. Forget all the what he feels about you that how he feels about you um that he probably has never felt with anybody else forget all of that focus on the core of who this person is and it's very easy to tell with the way they treat other people would let you know people that they are not in love with the way they generally just treat people will let you know if at all you should receive their love on that level because if you if you receive the love of an unkind person it's the worst thing that can happen to you like i mentioned it can leave you stranded miserable or even dead be smart all right thank you